and welcome back. So now we are essentially at the next stage and we actually want to connect to our clusters. Um, the documents or documentation that we have is mainly for Alto, but conceptually it's the same for any other cluster. Um, there are plenty of different ways how you can connect to the to the clusters and we will talk about two of them. Essentially, we will talk about an SSH connection and we will show a bit of the um, on-demand that Simo has already showed in the last session. Um, so if I scroll down a bit in the materials, there's a long list here, but some will exist on your cluster and some will not. All of them exist on, on Alta, but they show the two main things, I guess. Uh, we will, yeah. for demonstration purposes, assume that you have direct internet access to your cluster. That means uh, if you are on Alta, uh, you need to be on the virtual private network because the, um, because the, Ah, sorry. Um, because the Triton cluster is not directly accessible from the internet except the open on demand um, approach. So if you uh, want to follow and want to type along, um, you will need to be on the VPN. Um, since the question came up uh, before, what's the difference between the login node and the compute nodes? I think this image uh, shows it quite well. So the login node is the element that's connected to the net. Um, in this case, to the Alta network, or oh, in Alta to the Alta network um, on Lumi or other CSC machines, it's directly connected to the internet. And this machine is essentially your entry point to the cluster. This is the machine where you submit jobs, where you get, where you put things uh, onto onto the cluster or tell the cluster, okay, I want this to be computed. Um, in general, when, if you want to connect to the cluster, the first thing you have to do is you have to get an account. I assume that all of, the, all of you have done that for your respective clusters. And we will first uh, go through the um, SSH connection and Jano will demonstrate that. Okay, so... Um... Before we yeah, go on, so just to be sure, um, I'll just say again. So I'm connected to the, uh, I'm in the Alta network through the VPN. On, Yarno's, there's note that Yarno's voice is much louder. Mm, okay. Um, well, um, the only easy way I can access that is um, from here. So, yeah, okay. I <laughs> just a screen. moment. Okay, um, does that change the volume? Thomas, can you say something? Um, okay. Does it change it? Is this I hope it changed the list. Um, okay, well, um, I guess we can, we should okay. move on. Let's or... go on. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. Okay, so um, I have a terminal open here, and yeah, I am on the Alta network. Um, that's important. Um, so what do I do? Uh, I should use um, the, like, um, I will use a uh, standard method. I have some set up here that would make it, um, like I could type a significantly shorter command, but I, I will try to stick to whatever, something that works on whatever system you're on. So um, the command is SSH. Actually, before I do that, why don't I show where I am right now? So I can type the command host name. Um, that is the name of my laptop. That's an older laptop. They have usually a name that's something like this, starting with an L and with a number. Um, I can also take uh, also show my username, and that is 
uh, well, that is my username. Uh, it's again an Alto username. So actually you will see the same one on Triton. Maybe it would have been, um, would have been more interesting to see it change, but well, if you're coming from an Alto machine, you always have the same username. Okay, so um, I am on, on this machine and now I will type the command. So username, oops. At, and then the name of the machine. So that's triton.alto.fi. And the important bit here is um, it's the username that you have on the system that you want to connect yes. to. Yes. And you seemingly already have set up as Sage Keys. Uh, yes, that is true. If you, um, I'm on the VP, oh, right, it didn't ask for a password, correct, yes. Yeah. So um, should we demonstrate again uh, what it looks like if you haven't set it up? Um, there, there's not a big change. Uh, the main difference is that you will be asked for your password on yeah. that on that machine. And there um, are actually systems like Lumi where you have to have SH keys being set yeah. up. Um, they otherwise you can't. So I think um, um, I th the biggest difference I think that people will see. Well, there is a like, it will ask for a password. It will if, if it's the first time connecting to a new um, new server, so a a new machine. Um, it will also ask you, it, it will print this um, key um, that's a, essentially a random string of, char of characters, and it will ask you if that is the correct one. So if you're connecting to something for the first time, it's uh, pretty much safe to just type in yes. Uh, you can check it somewhere. You can check that it's correct. Yeah, um, I will put that into the come document. At least for okay. Triton. So I will go to the shared but, document. Uh, okay. For essentially any um, any HPC service, there will be a page where the SH key fingerprints are being listed, yeah. and you can check whether what's being shown to you will be or is the same as what's listed on there. Um, and if it is, then you are connecting to the right, correct. Yeah. So this having um, this key on the system essentially proves uh, that it is the right machine that uh, you're not nobody's trying to fake uh, triton you are actually in the actual correct triton machine um the main thing though is uh, because when you're connecting to, for the first time um it will just send it to you and you will have your machine has nothing to compare it to um so it will ask you to accept it from then on, if it ever changes, you your machine will either just refuse to connect, or it will um, at least ask you to um, to check what's going on. Um, um, it refuses. It refuses yeah. the connection and tells you, yeah, you can remove the old key there, but yeah. that's the point where checking whether the keys have actually changed makes sense. Yes. So um, if the key changes, it's either something really drastic has happened, like we have a new version of Triton or something, um, it's a completely new machine. Or someone is actually doing a, an attack and trying to get you to lock into the wrong system. So um, if it complains about this, um, it, it is a good thing to check. Yeah. But usually it doesn't. But essentially, this is how you connect via SSH. Yes. They... <laughs> There's really not much more to it, um, and then okay. Well, let's. Um, you, well, you can, actually, yeah. now in the prompt, you do have the name of the machine. It's login four. You do have my username. Um, you can type host name and see. It's login four dot and um, and then who am I again? Um, it's the same as before, unfortunately. Um, but well, that is my username on Alta. Okay, well, um, are we going to do anything more here? I guess not much. We will, of course, be using the machine much more in the um, in the next two days. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, then for the on-demand, which... So this is be... in the browser? Yeah. This, this is a way yeah. uh, that is quite convenient as well, um, depending on what you want to do. 
Um, so essentially, you go to uh, the page that Simo had shown earlier, which is on demand. Yes. So um, there is a, well, first of all, uh, uh, there's instructions for connecting with SSH. Uh, and then there is a link to on demand to try to not alter.fi. It's relatively easy to remember or bookmark. Let's go there. Um, I didn't actually want to close the materials, so I'll open it back up. Okay. Okay. So this is what the Triton Open on Demand looks like. like I'm already already. signed in. Yeah. I'm so, already logged yeah. in. It, it will ask so it, you to log in with your Alda credentials, yeah. um, which you have seen many times already. It's using a class, a standard multi-factor authentication for that. Yes. So in here you have um, multiple different things that you can do. Um, one thing, or the the most convenient things to use, uh, is the Triton Shell Access, which is essentially um, another shell. And this like will the, do exactly like, the same thing as SSH, yes. except in the browser. Except in the browser, so you don't even. I got the login need to type in any passwords because yeah. it already has your credentials. So that's kind of convenient if you just want to throw in a few commands and you haven't set up um, as uh, the command line yeah. in more detail. And this works from outside Aldo, but yes, you, that's awesome. you do need to log in uh, in the browser with the two-factor authentication. Yeah. yeah. Um, the th okay. second thing uh, is something that Simo has already shown. Um, essentially the Triton desktop. Um, this is for yeah. any graphical so applications. Uh, it could also be if you have uh, if you have some uh, some software that um, has a si has a simple graphical installer, you could essentially just request a session and run it there and uh, see if True. it installs or if it's missing um, or if it's missing things. Okay, if it installs here, huh? and it's a graphical tool, uh, you might you might encounter some issues um, running things later on uh, if you're not running it via Triton desktop because the desktop does ha does load a couple of libraries that are only available on some of the nodes because as mentioned earlier um, we want to keep the nodes themselves as ni as nimble as possible um, so that they are not wasting resources and uh, there are okay. only a limited amount of so I have access now there. so I can click through there. here um, there are, a f well, one or two things that we might well, that we might want to show. So, if you work on if you work with Chrome, Chrome uh, has the option to share the share uh, the, yes. share so you the can share your with, clipboard with the with the browser, which um, is kind of quite convenient. Um, if you have a browser that doesn't support that, you have this thing on the side where you also have a clipboard. So I'm going to copy the address from here so that it's, it should now be on the clipboard. Um, and indeed, because I am uh, on Chrome, it is here on the clipboard. But um, if it's not, you can paste it in and and then you have it in the clipboard. Um, That's oh, so uh, of this remote system of this Triton session. That might be a convenient thing if you, if uh, as I said, uh, want to install some software and have a license key or something like that. Um, yeah. You can essentially copy paste that um, via this um, this method. Um, Otherwise, if um, if you are used to the Linux desktop environments, um, this is very uh, familiar. Yep. And in general, um, it's of course very similar to any desktop environment. I can also open a terminal from here or run any other software. Of course, running a terminal from here is not necessarily the um, easiest way of accessing a terminal on Triton. Um, but now I'm actually on a compute node, yep. which is a interesting difference to the previous one. Yeah. So this is not the login node. We can do more stuff here. You are essentially only restricted by the number of resource by the amount of resources that you have requested when yep. you were requesting this. Um, session um, and there's one third thing that i think um, is worth mentioning on with on demand and that's um you ha that's a relatively easy way to transfer files if you could okay so we go out of the desktop 
I don't know if logging out is very important. Can I go and delete it? Or you can go and delete it from here as well. Yeah, but um, if you, yeah. If on demand, yeah, um, you go to this files thing. Uh, yes. Jano has a, has access to a couple of projects, obviously. Um, normally, you only have there your home directory, your work directory, and potentially additional projects that you are a member of. And that is a relatively convenient uh, method to at least upload smaller files and smaller things. Um, if you if we are getting into the gigabyte range, I would personally recommend to use the command line, uh, command line and things like rsync or similar. Um, but for smaller files, um, using using this file browsing utility and for uploading and downloading is absolutely fine. So that that's kind of the two approaches that you can, or the the approaches that you can use um, on the command line. You have everything that you have on a command line on OD. You are well somewhat restricted uh, with the connect uh, connection to your machine by what uh, what things can be transferred. And for example, on the Triton desktop, there's no copy paste of files. Right. You can't. You, if you cannot just uh, you cannot very easily move a file between the whatever laptop you're working on and the and the Triton uh, from there. But you can you can go through the files menu yeah. here and just upload it there, and yeah. it will show up on the Triton desktop um, in the folder that you place it in. So there are also several applications that are pre-installed here. Um, uh, so Jupyter, R Studio, Paraview, you know if you want to use them. Um, and uh, speech to text, for example, is for translating um, well spoken word into text. So that might be um, might be very useful for you. But that's an, um, that's purely but yeah. Auto. Yeah. So. Um, and yeah, so the different. Uh, different clusters will have different ways of accessing, but many of them do have some sort of way, um, this online system, something sim very similar to open on demand. Um, okay, uh, let, so I guess, questions. yes. So um, the point of the rest of this session is to get connected. And if you have questions, problems, feel free to ask. Um, and there is also the help Zoom session. If you have, if you are signed up, you should have received mm. see, received a link. Um, There's one one question that's already mainly answered. Yes. But uh, what if you forget to close the desktop? So, what I would like to add to the answer that's in the um, that's in the uh, HackMD is, uh, you are essentially well. Built by a uh, built for your time, in, but not in the sense that you are paying money for it. Uh, you are paying in priority, i.e., how fast you get resources if the if resources are in high demand. So if you leave something running while it should while it could be closed, you might have to wait longer for resources in the future. So there is this um, in jobs. You have this active jobs. I don't have any active jobs, but um, that's one way to find uh, what you have running. Actually, how do I get to the view where um, I had all of my old jobs as well? Well, I mean, there was a, a big red button to delete the job. Um, I mean, that will only delete it from the list, but if you, uh, if you see a running job there, there will be a button. I think it's a big red button to close that job. So if you close the tab and your desktop is still running, you can always go and close the job from there. I think you can always do. Yeah, I can. You can also find it in here if it's still running, and you can close it. Anything else? Um. Okay. Is the big picture okay? So our goal is. So there's lots of stuff that can happen here. And you saw a lot of demos. For tomorrow, what do people need to know how to do? Uh, 
so um, well, the main thing is to connect to the cluster in some way. So uh, find a way to get a terminal running on Triton, either uh, or, or um, on your local cluster. So either SSH into it, or find a way um, of um, accessing it uh, through a browser, either on demand or similar, and open a um, a terminal from there. So the main thing would be. Um, the main thing probably would be though to use SSH to access it. And um, there's instructions here for different operating systems that may be slightly different, a uh, few options for Windows, but Windows nowadays has just SSH uh, built in to the, uh, to the command line interface. So it's actually pretty much the same as on Linux and on Mac OS. Um, so it, it, yeah, at least as far as I know, um, the main thing is to get access to the cluster, get a terminal running on the cluster. And, you know, it's nice if you can, um, if you can check out what other features your cluster has and try them out. So if you're on Triton, try open on demand, um, see what you like there and how you like to use it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you don't need this after this break, but you need it by tomorrow. So there's plenty of time right. to keep figuring stuff out and to ask for support tomorrow morning and all that. And so do keep asking stuff in the notes and we will take a break now until the next hour. So three o'clock finish time or 35 minutes away from now. Um, you might come back a bit early, but if you can log in, go take a break and come back. Don't sit here waiting for us. Okay. Okay. If that's all, talk to you later. Bye.